this isn't exactly what I had in mind. I stabbed myself with a four and a half centimeter shard of glass in the leg a month before my wedding. Sorry, there's no real easy way to come out and say that, so. This is the story of my wedding and how it almost didn't happen. How I spent a month in and out of the hospital, the most stressful thing that Maggie and I have ever had to endure as people or as a couple. This is part one of a three-part story, one month before my wedding. Part one meaning three videos about my wedding. That that you heard was the chapter. So three videos, chapters within the video, you get it, let's do it. So uh, yeah, this is an x-ray of my calf, curvature looking nice, and that is the four and a half centimeter shard of glass that was currently impaled inside my body. I had no idea at that moment that there was something that big inside of me. And I have a panic attack. My toes are, are tingly and numb, I can barely feel them. It feels like my foot is on fire. It's just pain radiating through everything. I am nauseous thinking that I've caused permanent nerve damage. And I'm thinking, of course, about my wedding. Am I going to be able to dance? Am I even gonna be able to walk? What the hell did I just do? Yup, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. After years of being together, Maggie and I were finally ready to get married. Look, we don't plan on sharing a ton about our relationship as we move forward. This video series is probably like the last real in-depth look you're gonna get into us as a couple. But this is something we were excited to share. Weddings are fun, it's cool. And so if I was going to dance the night away, I needed to be in the best shape of my life, which brings us to the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life. So I came up with this plan to use this treadmill for the first time in my life. Nothing crazy, just some power walking. I need to pause the story to share that I recently filmed a, a big short film about chronic pain. It's it big and visual and crazy with tons of visual metaphors. And Maggie let us film here at my house. So I had to take my whole house apart. She let me paint my office. She let me paint the bedroom. Uh, we both fully hate this color. And so while I was like disrupting our lives, I wanted to be courteous. I, I wanted to make things as tidy as possible, keep them out of the way. So I take some picture frames and I decide to tuck them behind this treadmill that we never use. That was a mistake. So I'm power walking on the treadmill, I'm at the end of my 35 minutes, so I'm up here and then it goes faster and I'm back here, and then it goes slower and I'm up here, and then for the last push, it goes faster. So I'm back here and my legs are going back and forth, back and forth, and back, boom. As an aside, yes, I was wearing Crocs on the treadmill, but I maintain that has nothing to do with the reason I got injured. So immediately I feel this electric shock just radiate, shoot through my foot. Uh, and I don't feel where it stabs me. I feel a thousand tiny needles stab the bottom of my foot. I would later learn that this feeling is the shard of glass rubbing up against my nerve. <laughs> Fun! So I stop the treadmill, I, I, I sit down, I'm bleeding, Maggie runs in, what the f And I'm like, hey, I think I need to go to the hospital. Very zen, I learn when I get stabbed. There's this tiny piece of glass sticking out of my leg. We remove the glass, we stop the bleeding, and we go, okay, I think it's okay. There was a four and a half centimeter shard of glass in my leg? I'm gonna make this part as quick as possible because we were at UCLA ER for 18 hours. <laughs> they had me in this makeshift room, uh, which is in the lobby with just like paper curtains around me. So I'm getting x-rays, I'm getting CAT scans, I'm getting something called contrast, which makes your CAT scan more effective, which also makes you feel like you're peeing yourself. That's fun. And then three different uh, bedside doctors come and they go, I think I can give this a shot. And they just numb me and are wiggling around inside my leg trying to get the freaking piece of glass out. And we're going, hey, maybe we should go into the, the go to the surgery team. And they're like, I got it, I got it. And then they're like, oh, I, I don't got it. Three times. Finally, after who knows how many hours, the surgery team comes by and they say, hey, we're bringing you upstairs. Time to cut you open. 
And here's a fun thing in case uh, you ever plan on getting stabbed. Uh, there's no guarantee that they find it. <laughs> Which they kept saying to me, they, they were like, hey, so we're gonna go in, we're gonna do our best, but no promises that it comes out. I wake up from the greatest nap of my life. Uh, and I immediately text my friends and family this photo and say, I lived, bitch. Um, which, don't do that. This was, my friends didn't even know I was in the hospital, so they were very alarmed. Also, they gave me a cracker, yum. I do have photos from the surgery of the glass being removed from my open wound. I, I can't show you that for obvious reasons, uh, but I can show you reactions of my friends seeing the photo, which I will show you now. The next few weeks would be spent icing and elevating and resting, uh, which meant I couldn't be in Try Guys videos. I had to miss this season of phoning it in, which really bummed me out. <coughs> <coughs> Your turn. <laughs> But, you know, it was all about focusing on getting to the wedding, recovery. During this time, Maggie was taking great care of me. My friends were taking care of me. Thank you, Nurse Becky. Fresh cues. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> My ankles looked like beach balls, but we got this badass knee scooter for me to scoot around. Beep, beep. Next stop, Badass Express. Woo! And with painkillers, I was able to get some steps in. I was working my way back up, you know, just eye on the prize, get healthy, get to the wedding. Overall, I would say I was taking it pretty well. Until... I'm just gonna cut to the chase and tell you it got infected. The skin is big and puffy and red and oozing what I can only describe as pizza grease. I know, I'm sorry, I don't know what else to call it. It is getting Harder to walk every day, it hurts like hell. We go back to the ER to see if it's infected, and at this point, my skin, the top layer has scabbed over. So to get a sample, the doctor, without any anesthetic, takes a sterilized Q-tip, and he stabs it into my infected wound. And when I tell you that is a brand new, 10 out of 10 on the pain scale, just the worst thing that I've ever felt. And then about seven minutes later, the nurse comes by and goes, I found the anesthetic. So we wait for the test results. I go back to work for one day. I film a branded post, do a podcast, part of a video. And then I get a text from my beautiful wife-to-be that says, hey, hospital called. You gotta go back to the emergency room immediately. Your boy was growing not one, but two infections. Two bugs inside my leg, very cool. MSSA, which is a staph infection, very serious. And serratia, a rarer bug, um, that you really only usually get if you are immunocompromised and in the hospital. Okay, let's speed run this. I get another CAT scan, I have a hematoma and a big old cluster of infection in my leg. Not to mention three pieces of glass they missed the first time. I get another surgery, I lived bitch part two. They flush the wound out, they put this thing called a Pemrose, it's like a forbidden boba straw sticking out of my leg. Uh, it helps the wound drain and not get infected again. They put me on a bunch of different antibiotics and I am back at day one of healing. This time, uh, they keep me in the hospital for four days. Uh, I'm on IV antibiotics to really kill this thing, but they also need to wait to figure out what specific antibiotics are gonna be best for my wound. I uh, was trying to order lunch, and it seems like I am uh, uh, restricted from ordering tacos, and I think it's because of a food allergy I have, but I've had the tacos three, four times. I need my tacos, please. Okay, are you on hold? Please, man. Every day I try and walk around, get my strength up a little bit, keep moving. Again, I, I, I'm getting married in three weeks. I, I want to heal. I haven't mentioned it much at this point, but it is worth noting that Maggie was a, a f***ing rock star through this whole process. And of course she was. I, I mean, it helps that she is a nurse, obviously, but she was just so caring and compassionate and, and there for me, absorbing all of this stress and medical knowledge so that I could just 
focus on healing. She was continuing to plan for our wedding that we didn't know if it was gonna be able to happen or not. And I don't know that I'm gonna ever be able to fully articulate how incredible she was during that time, how grateful I am for her. Nurse Maggie. Can you grab my teddy bear? <laughs> That's an old logo. <laughs> I woke up from a nap and there was a little teddy bear waiting for me. He's got the same leg injury as me. He's got really cool glasses. He's got the exclusive merch. This is a rare one. While I'm here, I'm trying to take the time to like practice my first dance. So I'm just... At this point, I start filming a little more at the hospital because I was bored. Hey, I'm Keith. Welcome to Zach Eats Everything at the UCLA Medical Center. This hospital. Hospital food gets a bad rap, but this is very bland. And right now, I like bland. The minestrone soup. really good. The cup of fruit. Mostly cantaloupe. The grilled chicken sandwich, open faced. Yum yum. Just got good news, finally. We got my antibiotic and we think I'm gonna get to go home today. Yay! I'm cautiously optimistic. There's definitely things where I'm like, well, what happens if it comes back? What happens if there's still leftover glass in there? What happens if there's blood sitting in there and bacteria? Kind of looks like I like you beheaded me and are holding my head around, right? It looks like <laughs> you're like a floating little head. <laughs> it looks like. And after four days, it was time to triumphantly return to my home. But we're not even close to done yet. Once again, I am sent home to recover. I miss another Big Try Guys production. This one bummed me out. It was a new show that I was leading. Keith had to step in to host. I couldn't be in it at all. But again, most important thing was getting me healthy for the wedding. But I'm healing. I think, you know, Maggie's tending to my wound. I'm doing okay. Every morning, Maggie changes my wound. Naked. Well, they don't know that. Quick footnote to the story, about a week later, I uh, go in for a checkup. They take out my Pemrose, the little forbidden boba straw. On the way walking back to the car, I look down and my foot is bleeding so profusely, literally drenched in blood, the entire sock, like movie Halloween blood red, that onlookers start screaming. They, they start trying to call an ambulance. People are freaking out. We had to run back to the emergency room. I'm covered in blood and then it just stopped bleeding. Just like a little fun fluke thing. I don't think I can show the photos without this video getting H-gated. I feel like there's some of you out there who are freaks and like want to see the bloody stuff. Like you want to see the wound. You want to see the infected wound. Should I make like an OnlyFans just for my gross wound photos? And then like I can give the money to charity or something. I mean, I got some like good stuff. I've got like the blood photos. I've got the infected wound. Really, truly disgusting stuff. The blood thing was just a fluke. The real fun starts three days after that, when I start developing a fever. Look, if you're exhausted at this point, how do you think I felt? It's now January 29th. I am 25 days into this and 13 days out from my wedding. And I may be going to go back to the ER for a third time. I am running a fever, which is a bad thing to be running if you've been fighting two infections inside your body and you're immunocompromised. There's this fear of the infection reaching your bloodstream and you entering something called sepsis. And to complicate things, I spent the day having diarrhea more times than I can count and more times than I would care to admit. I am shivering uncontrollably. I'm under four blankets and cannot get warm. And so, third time's the charm. We get to the emergency room. Uh, my heart rate was 130 when I was sleeping. That's high. My white blood cell count, usually around nine, was 14 the first time I was infected. Now is at 26. That's bad. And I cannot stop pooping. That's gross. They make me give them a sample of the poop and they send me into the bathroom with a jar and a popsicle stick. And when I tell you that this was not something that was 
popsicle stickable. 12 days out from my wedding at this point. So I am diagnosed not with sepsis, not with a reoccurrence of my infection, but with something new. I have C. diff. C. diff is basically a super infectious diarrhea bug. Uh, it's something that you commonly can get when you're on too many antibiotics. And now you have the big bad poop disease. It's super contagious. So anyone who comes in here has to wear a special garb. Hand sanitizer doesn't work uh, because it is a spore. You have to wash your hands with soap and water. There's a big scary sign on my door saying that. And this time I get to stay in the hospital for a whole week. I have a fever. I can't control my body temperature. I am delirious, but I also I'm keeping myself entertained. This is where I live. I live here now in the hospital. Why do I look like I have eyeliner on? Am I crazy? Do I look like I'm the lead singer of a 2000 emo scene band? I'm sorry, Why am I back in the hospital? I want to get married. But they get me on medicine and, and slowly I start feeling better. I look like a superhero. I got Steve Rogers in the lab, pre-serum. You know I'm feeling better because I'm like, ugh, enough of the living life, I want to vlog again. And at this point, not to brag, I'm very good at hospitals. So I start looking around for ways to entertain myself. So there's this computer and it, uh, it has a name. I feel like the universe is taunting me. Nope, don't like that. Nope, I'm gonna look at that. We are not gonna comment on that one. You got your four by four boats, your two by gauze, you got your belonging bag list. A urine cups and wipes and Kleenex, hot sand bed pants. Don't forget your socks. I'm fing bored. <clears throat> it's not even good. Let me show you my sick ass outfit. This, of course, is a hospital gown. We know these, we love these. What's fun about this is that your butt is always hanging out. What's not fun about this is that I currently have a very infectious butt disease. So I've added scrub pants. Um, what's fun about these is that, let me show you, there's a hole in the front. No matter what you do, it's gonna show through. People are going to see your penis. The medicine, goddamn, medicine is great. And I am feeling so good, I am ready to go home. But because this story needs another turn, my insurance company will not approve my medicine. I can't go home without my medicine. So I am just stuck in the hospital eight days before my wedding. And the only thing between me and super fever diarrhea mode is a little $10,000 pill that my insurance company will not approve. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield. America's medical system is f***ed and fundamentally broken, but it's even worse if you don't have insurance. So better hope you have a job that comes with a good one. Blue Cross Blue Shield, one of the better ones, actually. What does that say about the rest? So for three of these days, I am stuck in the emergency room because I, I don't think people realize this. Hospitals never recovered from COVID. And I don't just mean people getting sick from COVID, which yeah, is still a thing, is still happening, but it's just this backlog of patients and more people getting sick and people who put stuff off. And so the hospital is just totally overrun. The ER hallways, not the rooms, the hallways are lined back to back to back with beds everywhere you can see, every square inch of that place. And I'm stuck in the ER because the rest of the hospital is filled. It's called Code Red Census. Now, I'm technically lucky that I even have a room. Uh, they wanted to put me in the hallway. Yeah, that's right, the hallway. The hospital's at Code Red right now, meaning it is totally full. So there's just like no room for people. I don't know how that would work if I tried to come today. Would they just say, no, sorry? <laughs> Nurses are burnt out. They are quitting. Hospitals are understaffed and overworked. So many of my nurses were traveling nurses who this was their first day in California, let alone this hospital. I mean, they didn't know where things were. They're just trying their best. Outside my room, there was a 75 year old woman who was laying in the middle of a hallway under bright fluorescent lights day and night, you know, being exposed to God knows what. And the only reason that I had a room and 
she didn't is because I had something that was deemed infectious. The American health system is failing us. And if you're young, you probably think that doesn't matter because you're healthy, but you are not gonna be young forever. And I am here to tell you that when you need it, when you are there in the darkest times of your life, it ain't a good experience. Time is a flat circle and I'm trapped in between. I'm just so f***ing over being here. I'm starting to snap at my friends and my family and uh... And take it from my experience, you could be in the happiest period of your life doing something as inane as walking on a treadmill and have one tiny accident that sends your life into hell and frankly could have disabled me for life. But okay, back to the fun stuff because I am stuck in the hospital and I am losing my mind. The music and the beats are in the air. The music and the beats are in the air. <laughs> Now, you may think, Zach, you seem so lonely in the hospital. Not true. I've got Maggie, and I've also got my best bug, Phillips. I've got hospital socks. They're gut proof. No matter what side you put them on, it's correct. Boop. This is to check my pulse and my vitals. In the hospital, they come and uh, they don't let you sleep. They check on you a million times. So last night I got woken up at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., <laughs> 4 30 6 and 7 so i feel s stupid insane today so last night at two in the morning i wake up i take my eye mask off and i just see let me adjust it this <laughs> and i hear mr cornfeld mr cornfeld and i'm like uh, uh, uh. And my glasses are off it's blurry i literally didn't know where i was i thought maybe for my first thought was was i just abducted by aliens how cool would that be second thought no that's silly and then i was like did i consent to a surgery and for while well, maggie was gone and then forget about it because i got anesthesia and now i'm waking up from a surgery turns out no i'm this just, this is over my bed and i've just never seen the light before but I am one week away from my wedding and I have got shit to do. I gotta make sure I know my dances. I gotta make sure I'm in shape. I gotta make sure I look good. So I got new shirts to try on. This is from the proper cloth. They hooked me up because my other shirt was poo poo. They're all nice. Yeah. They're all nice. Yeah, but I like the pure white probably. Yeah, the pure white is. I like these two. Okay, you know, okay, all right. Thank you, thank you, Maggie. Enough of that. Got it out of our system, good. You're not gonna do it again, that's great. <laughs> and that's good, and I'm glad there's not, she's not even gonna even think about doing it one more time. There's nothing left, and. <laughs> pretty good. Ask Eugene. What do I ask? Does this look good? Should I tailor it more? Hey Eugene, does this look good? Should I tailor, tailor it more? At this point, we were already supposed to be in Mexico for my wedding. We canceled our flight, we canceled our mini moon. We didn't know when I was gonna be able to get there, but it was like, okay, as long as we get there by Wednesday, we're gonna be okay. Uh, today, I have been doing a lot of work, just pacing around this room a lot, trying to be a normal person-ish. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> you think that's funny? You think that's funny? That's a little Chewbacca sticker. Finally, for the third time in a month, I was discharged from the hospital with seven days to go until my wedding. With antibiotics for my leg, antibiotics for my stomach, and a suitcase full of wound supplies, it was time to get married. Hey guys, so news update from the hospital. I'm out. Just get me out of here, let's go. There were several points through this where we wondered if we were gonna be able to get married. I mean, we wouldn't have been crazy for canceling it. Maybe we're crazy that we didn't cancel it. You know, they say marriage, you're together through sickness and in health. And uh, Maggie had to stick with me through the sickness part before we even got started. There was no point during any of this in which I was willing to 
to cancel the wedding, frankly. I, I, I was going through with it one way or another. Because one, we already paid for it, <laughs> so. But two, more importantly, I f***ing love Maggie. The universe threw every last thing it had at us, and we got through it. At this point, the only thing left to do was get to Mexico and get married. We had three days of incredible events to look forward to. The next video is going to be everything leading up to the wedding. The video after that will be the wedding. I'll spoil the ending for you and say that my leg did hold up. I was able to walk down the aisle and dance the night away and have a party beyond my wildest dreams. But my ankle did swell up like crazy the morning after from dancing. Ah, uh, oops. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs>